On May the 4th, 2015, a relatively unknown rapper by the name of Rallo releases a song with rap superstar Future called Can't Lie. Getting a verse from one of the biggest rappers in the game is no easy feat, but when you're the biggest drug dealer this side of Atlanta, you can buy pretty much anything you want. In fact, Rallo was one of the biggest dope slingers the city had ever seen since Big Meech and the Black Mafia family, or BMF, terrorised the streets of Atlanta in the early noughties. And Rallo's dope dealing turf, where he would make his millions, would be a rundown drug infested block called The Bluff. Now, The Bluff has been described in numerous articles and reports over the years as an open-air heroin market, with descriptions of The Bluff painting a truly shocking scene of a neighbourhood gripped by addiction, where drug dealers would literally chase traffic and fight over who gets to serve the latest junkies. And unsurprisingly, the properties in The Bluff are so undesirable you can snap up a local bando for a bargain $10,000. So a young Rallo came up in The Bluff, and as a result, unsurprisingly, he was frequently in trouble with the law. Apparently, he started his drug dealing career as a teenager, being sent to juvenile jail dozens of times before even becoming an adult. When I was younger, I was going to jail so fucking much for trafficking cocaine, armed robberies, kidnappers, and shit like that. From the age of 12 to 16, I was, I was juvenile 32 times. 32 times, total in your life. And Rollo would later admit in a Vlad TV interview that his father was formerly a big drug dealer from the bluff and that he'd inherited the business from his dad. His occupation was a kingpin drug dealer. Because I was around the people and all his clientele knew me as his son. They were just waiting for me to get some dope to supply them with. So as I grow older, the clientele was already attached to me. Clearly, Rollo was heavy in the streets before he'd had an opportunity to make it in music. And like many other underdeveloped and impoverished hoods in America, gang activity ran rampant in the bluff, with the crew that Rollo pledged allegiance to going by the name Famerica. In fact, Rollo's earliest post on Instagram is a picture of him wearing a Famerica t-shirt, something that the whole crew would do. On Instagram, Rollo would post countless pictures of himself with Famerica members or fam goons rolling deep in the bluff and and wearing matching Famerica tees. Clearly the fam goons were getting busy in the streets of Atlanta, as Rollo would boast on Instagram with pride, sharing news clippings that claim Famerica have been identified as Atlanta's number one street gang. And even saying in a caption, we ain't the biggest or the baddest, but I can say me and my young guys go hard. It ain't nothing to brag on, but the city of Atlanta titled Famerica the number one street gang two years in a row, meaning there wasn't another group of people that went harder than Famerica. This ain't my personal opinion, this is something that's documented. Do your homework, you'll find out. Free to crew. Hashtag fam Erica. Clearly Rollo was doing well for himself as early as 2012, posting pictures on Instagram, holding wads of money that seemed to get bigger in every photo. And clearly Rollo had big aspirations in the dope game, like other legendary Atlanta dope pushers, because he would post the formerly biggest drug pusher in Atlanta, Big Meech, to his IG, along with a caption reading, fast cars, all the baddest bitches, they couldn't even add up all the paper homie was getting. Dude had a huge impact on America. Not too many people kicked shit like homie. Free Meech went from the hood to Hollywood. Whatever Rallo was doing in the streets was working, because by the end of 2013, he'd be buying people cars and spending so much money in Walmart, the cashier's hands were hurting. And eventually, he would take some of that drug money and invest it into his rap career, buying verses from the most iconic rappers in Atlanta music history, flexing every car, watch, and chain that you could imagine a rapper flexing and naturally flying all around the USA on private jets with a whole bunch of fam goons and a whole lot of suspicious packages, trapping at the very highest levels before the authorities would finally catch up with him. Rollo claimed to have decided to take his career in the rap game seriously after a short stint in prison, telling DJ Booth magazine that he heard rappers talking about moving bricks and killing people, and it was clear to him that they would never tell the dark truth behind that lifestyle. And while he'd been rapping as a child, he began working with Atlanta rapper Young Scooter, who was a childhood friend of his, that he'd grown up with sharing abandoned houses together in the bluff as kids. Me and Scooter, we grew up together, you know what I'm saying? When he found out I was doing the music, he was 100% behind me, you know what I'm saying? and he gave me all he got. Their track Stay Focused would drop on the 3rd of November 2014, and Rollo would continue putting in work and spending money to break his way into the rap game legitimately, admitting to DJ Small Eyes that he knew he would need to spend money to be taken seriously as a rapper. And use your own money and put it behind yourself. Ain't no sense that you're going to go do no music if you can't put no money behind you. Go get the money and then spend the money on the talent. And he also opened up to Vlad TV, who Rollo told outright that he had sold drugs to fund his rap career. And then, um, um, I started selling drugs. I got into the drug business real heavy. And then after I stopped selling drugs, I started rapping. 
I invested my money in rap. And so Rollo would be on social media promoting the upcoming Famerica Armed and Dangerous mixtape, as well as flexing all of the iced out jewellery and watches that he was buying, as is the way of an up and coming Atlanta rapper. And of course he copped a Bentley, making sure to pose in it, taking unlimited Instagram pictures. Rollo's name was picking up a buzz in the streets of Atlanta, and he would soon be seen making club appearances with the likes of Young Thug, The Migos, and Shorty Low. And Rollo would continue fostering a collaborative relationship with his day one supporter, Young Scooter. With their next track for show dropping on January the 26th, 2015. And it would be Rallo's friendship with Scooter that would ultimately connect him with his breakout collaborator Future, with Rallo admitting he was only able to befriend Future initially by showing off his expensive jewelry. I first met Future. The reason why we even started conversating was about this jewelry. I got the damn jewelry and I was able to talk to Future and that made me different from everybody in the room because ain't nobody in the room could pay $60,000 for that chain that I had bought. Future would tweet publicly in March 2015 saying that him and Rollo have a hit record coming, with Rollo and Future's big collaboration called Can't Lie dropping with a music video on May the 4th, 2015. This song would go on to be a street hit, today sitting with a view count over 7.5 million views. And despite having been rapping since age 11, this would be Rollo's first big break in the mainstream rap industry. He'd allegedly paid Future $25,000 for the verse, later claiming in an interview that he was coming out of the streets and wanted a hot rapper on his first big song to get his career popping. Uh, I was looking for a single and I couldn't really make me a singer myself because I'm not really a radio artist. Know what I'm saying most of my music is street music. Know what I'm saying because I came from the streets and ain't nobody right now better than Future right now. Know what I'm saying he had he he about the hottest artist in the industry right now. You know what I'm saying school to put it together with me for me. Can't Lie was from Rollo's debut mixtape, Fam American Gangster, releasing on April 10th, 2015. Now, we know that Fam America is the name of the gang that Rollo and his friends were part of growing up, and once Rollo's rap career took off, he would incorporate this name, Fam America, into countless songs and mixtape titles. But in an effort to cover his back, in a May 2015 interview, Rollo claimed that Fam America wasn't a gang, suggesting instead that he had repurposed the name to start a foundation and community outlet in his local area. Fam America, man, where, where did you come up with that name? I remember, you know, it was a group of individuals, it was like four or five of us at the time, you know what I'm saying? We started at a young age, we were like in the seventh or eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? It started as like a miniature gang or whatnot, you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? And due to the fact I've been through a lot right now, and I went to prison and things that matter, and we have made it out a little foundation for the youth. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to give back family in America, because we lost what we had in the first place. Right. You know, with like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and the people that built things up for us. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get, go back to this. And by July 2015, despite having only had a couple of months being a popping rapper, Rollo is seen driving around in Lamborghinis and later posting on Instagram a picture of himself with the caption saying that he went from the back of cop cars to the back of private jets. But the next minute, he's driving around in a Rolls Royce and it truly seems like the money is never going to run out. But Rollo is making his way into the mainstream rap industry and putting in a lot of networking too. He was seen posted up with the likes of YFN Lucci, Young Dolph, Young Jeezy, Future, and Young Thug, as well as being seen doing numerous interviews during his come up, like the DJ Small Eyes interview where he openly says that he made millions in the street and bought everything he has with drug money and that he's a fam goon to the core. They made millions out the street, know what I'm saying? Made millions. I bought all this shit drug money, man. I ain't never called myself the leader of my crew, know what I'm saying? I'm even with them. I'm, I'm a brother. I'm a fam American. I'm, I'm, I'm a fam goon. I ain't no better than the next man I'm standing next to. Rollo was a big time dope dealer and he really didn't care who knew it. And so he would continue using his dope money to push his career forward, releasing his Diary of the Streets mixtape on November the 26th, 2015. This project had numerous features from big name Atlanta rappers, including the future mortal enemies of the Atlanta rap scene, both YFN Lucci and Young Thug on the same project. He also had features from the likes of Rich Homie Quan and Shy Glizzy, as well as Future who appeared on the track Dog Food, a track that samples a lyric from Future's own song Blood on the Money from his infamous Dirty Sprite 2 mixtape, where Future rapped, I keep that dog food like I'm Rallo. And if you didn't know, dog food is actually Atlanta slang for heroin, a phrase that Rallo would use frequently throughout his career. In fact, Rallo actually claimed that it was this song that got the police looking into him, saying that he only stopped selling drugs around the time of this project dropping, and suggesting that Future running around saying that Rallo's got the dog food brought him a lot of unwanted attention. I said fuck something, I kept getting into it with the police. They got real hot on me because of the music shit, bro. You know, Future said he keep that dog food like Rallo. 
It brought a lot of more attention. His track I Know featuring Young Thug would be a legendary collab, and at this point Rollo was officially in the rap game. He had used his ill-gotten drug money to buy a seat at the table, and he had truly pulled out that seat and was eating good. And going into 2016, Rollo would have an incredible run in the rap game, pushing his career to brave new heights and attracting a whole lot of attention to himself in the process. In April 2016, after Rallo failed to get accepted onto the XXL freshman list, he takes to IG saying that he doesn't care because he made the most money this year whilst flexing an ungodly amount of cash. LSM, rookie of the year. Bitch, I am the rookie of the year. I made the most money this year. I bought the most jewelry this year. You did what I'm saying? Rallo, found boom. This was just the beginning of Rallo's long-running habit of posting pictures on Instagram with far more money than you would expect somebody who's just dropped one mixtape to have. And these egregious pictures of Rallo showing off piles of money would certainly come back to haunt him. But for now, he seemed completely oblivious to the fact that being a rapper didn't mean that he could also be a drug dealer at the same time. And during this time, he linked up with more massive names in the rap game, like Birdman and 21 Savage, who both appeared on Rallo's Diary of the Streets 2 tape releasing in August 2016 along with other big features like Lil Uzi Vert and Young Thug, appearing alongside 21 Savage on the classic Rallo collaboration track Flexing On Purpose. The project also had another track with Future called My Brothers, and following the release of this mixtape, Rallo would continue flexing stupid amounts of money on Instagram, along with stupidly incriminating captions. In September, Rallo posts a picture on Instagram showing him using a money counter surrounded by a whole bunch of cash, along with a caption saying that he's made millions and he now owns 10 properties. And that very same month, Rollo was covered in a DJ Booth article along with a headline revealing that Rollo claimed to have made $12 million dealing drugs before he was a rapper, with Rollo openly confessing that he had made way more money off the drug game than the rap game, boldly claiming to have made $12 million in just one year of dealing, but suggesting that he's giving up crime because he'd rather be broken free than rich and in jail. During this interview, it's also claimed that Rollo has moved out of the bluff to a mansion in southwest Atlanta in the Cascade area where the mayor lives. But despite having made millions of dollars in the streets, at least Rallo gave back to his community, sort of. Because in October 2016, Rallo visits a homeless shelter, picking up headlines for making it rain $50,000 and having the homeless people fight over his drug money. Public service announcement. This is for all the young females in school, high school, that don't want to get an ugly black boy a chance. You got to be careful who you don't give a chance. No, I'm trying to get like Rollo, man. I'm for real. I'm trying to get like Rollo. <laughs> yeah. Rain, sour, Ray, Ray, nigga. Yeah, rain, sour, Ray, Ray, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And as the year went on, he would continue brazenly posting on Instagram with guns and money. In a November 2016 Say Cheese interview, Rallo would reveal that Future had told him to quit selling drugs and that it took everything for him to leave the bluff. Because Future always wanted me to quit. Right? It took everything in me to leave the bluff and sell some along. You know, like that's home, you know, selling dope. Nobody never told me that shit was wrong. He asked me, I lied to him. I said, yeah, I already quit. I kept lying to him, but <laughs> I already quit, so I can say what I want to say. Man. You sure you quit? And what he's just like, he's still telling me every day, like. So. Rallo claimed in 2016 to have quit the drug game, but that would be hard to believe, when the still relatively fresh to the game rapper would continue to flex on social media, showing off hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash and cars. We got the motherfucking Lamborghini parked in the motherfucking pack in the motherfucking group. $400,000 car. $416,000 of that. You know, we got about 30,000 on the motherfucking seat. 
Rollo would end 2016 sharing more pictures of bundles of cash and appearing once again on Vlad TV, saying openly once again that he had made $12 million in the drug game and that he was only left with $3 million. I actually made 12, right? Because I was counting how much money I had made. Mm -hmm. But I only had like three. Rollo would also elaborate that his fam goons move militantly, basing their operation in a whole apartment complex that he owns and controls. I move to this day with a large team. You know what I'm saying? I got us some apartments. I bought the whole complex. Moving into 2017, Rollo was clearly doing well for himself, being seen on social media showing off a million dollars in jewelry and counting wads of money in the Waffle House. But on the 12th of February, Rollo gets a big career W when it's announced that he is becoming Atlanta Trap legend Gucci Mane's latest signee, joining Gucci's 1017 Eskimo record label. And the very same day, Rollo would drop his next mixtape, Fam American Gangster 2, coming with appearances from YFN Lucci, Gucci Mane, Future, and 21 Savage, including a track called Young N Word featuring Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Yachty, and Young Thug, with all of these announcements and releases apparently coming on Rollo's birthday. And this was a big day for him. He was seen on Instagram receiving an iced out bone cake that says, happy birthday, Mr. Dog Food. Yeah. And continuing into 2017, Mr. Dog Food would continue doing very well for himself, posing with yet more cash on Instagram and releasing a music video for his song Rollo Escobar, seemingly openly hinting towards his role as a big drug kingpin. And the track came along with hard hitting lyrics where Rollo would reveal that his brother killed himself in the living room of their family home and they continued living and selling drugs from the house like it was nothing. A month later on April the 25th, 2017, Rollo continues his run of songs with incriminating titles, this time dropping a track called Rico Act. You know, the thing they're going to use to put him in jail. Then on May the 28th, Rollo claims to have gone to a shopping mall and being frustrated by the security following him around, he decided to buy every single outfit in every single store, then offering the security guards clothes. And in the days that follow, Rollo would show off another huge pile of money on Instagram. Okay. Okay. Spread out, spread out, because I'm going to need y'all help to tell me what color I should wear. Um, I, I really like the blue on the pink, OG. I like the blue on the pink. Shit kind of look good. But then I look at the pink on the pink. The pink on the pink kind of look good. These going to be some $300,000 on the shoes now. And I need y'all to tell me what, what color I should wear with. Okay, y'all see the, the pink on the pink, then y'all see the blue on the blue. And I think that we can possibly add a little green to that shit. Okay. Here go another 50,000. Here go another 50,000. Which one look the best, OG? His stacks were getting bigger and bigger with every social media post. But in keeping with his efforts to always give back, Mr. Dog Food was seen on social media giving real food, McDonald's, to the homeless people around his area. In July, he would be more active on Instagram, throwing more money on the floor. I don't even budge y'all. I just bought these bitches because they're raining outside. It's raining outside, so I bought some jars. They're raining outside. This is what I bought. I don't even want them. I just bought them because it's raining. No, it's dripping on the on the joint. Oh yeah, it's raining out here. That's what I bought. I bought them because it's raining. And then we gonna go out here and let them get wet. Woo! Fresh pack. No fuck for these joints. Is this what you fucking for? Oh, a pair of these? I know you ain't fucking for a pair of these. How much for all the shoe? Oh, get yourself together. Then he sweeps it all up slash has a shower in said money. All right, so listen, listen. You're going to have to leave for about, about 10 minutes. Okay, cool. What you want me to do? I'm going to take me a shower. You got to leave. Oh, you got to leave. Take me a shower. Put some extra. Put some extra. I'm gone. I'm going to leave. Take me a shower. You got to leave. Got me a bar of soap. A couple bars of soap. Yeah. A <laughs> couple bars of soap. Make sure. Oh, oh, you got to, oh, Should I make voodoo in this shit? <laughs> oh. Should I make voodoo in it? <laughs> so you got make gushy in it, oh, make gushy in it. Yeah, I'm trying to tell him. Yeah. Shit, shit. <laughs> I ain't clean enough. I don't feel like I'm clean enough, chaos. <laughs> you feel like I'm clean enough? 
Shit. Don't forget, you, don't forget behind your ears. Uh, my yeah, mama always yeah. told me that. Don't forget behind your ear. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go on. Yeah. In a July the 6th, 2017 My Mixtape interview, Rollo refers to his apartment complex that the fam goons run their operation from by the nickname Pakistan, with Rollo promising that they don't sell drugs from those apartments, as well as revealing that in this complex he provides everything for his fam goons. We godly men, we sit up here and we pray, we ain't on no fuck shit, we ain't selling no dope over here in the apartment. I'm Mr. Dial Fool, I've been dead, that ain't gotta do that again in my life. You can down there call this a homeless shelter if you want to, cause all my niggas ain't got shit but me. All the clothes they wear, I buy their clothes, all the cars they drive, my cars. Then in July 2017, Rollo would drop a joint mixtape with his new label boss, Gucci Mane. A tape called Rollo LaFlair, where he appears on the cover with Gucci Mane's iconic ice cream cone face tattoo, and he really channeled his inner Gucci Mane by getting a feature from none other than Atlanta legend OJ the Jew Man. Hey. He also had the likes of Fetty Wap, Young Thug, and Lil Durk on the album, and clearly the project was a big financial success, because the day after its release, Rollo would take to Instagram to flex yet another enormous bankroll, and a video of him showing off all his jewellery, and yet more pictures posing with money. In July, Rollo is rubbing shoulders with Travis Scott, who apparently promises to pull up to Pakistan with Quavo. Then on the 25th of July, Rollo posts a clip of him driving his new camouflage Lamborghini, along with an explanation of why he still lives in the hood even though he's rich, saying this is where he wants to be. This is interesting because it seems to suggest that at this point, Rollo has indeed moved back to the bluff. And despite telling Futures and others in interviews that he was truly done selling drugs, the Famerica's operation in his compound at Pakistan didn't seem to be stopping one bit. On August the 4th, Rollo continues flexing his Lambo on Instagram, talking about how he used to struggle with rent, but now he owns every house that he stays in, and he continued pushing his music throughout this period. On August the 15th, dropping the song Never Going Broke with Young Dolph, and all through the end of August, Rollo continued continued brazenly flexing his wealth on Instagram. On August the 30th, posting his crew shopping in the mall saying that he brought something for everyone, as well as showing off much more money. On September the 5th, he drops a music video for Rallo Back with OJ the Jewel Man. Hey! Unfortunately, it didn't sound like paradise in Pakistan. And on September the 8th, Rallo would make a post on social media complaining that the feds are following him everywhere he goes. And clearly, Rallo decided then to put on a show for those watching him, because the following week, he returned to social media with a message for Google regarding his net worth which he said is listed on Google way lower than it is in reality. Hey, I just looked on Google and they stated that my net worth is $500,000. Hey, 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 listen here. The apartments cost two million dollars, nigga. That car cost a half a million dollars, nigga. That here academy vet, nigga, I paid a hundred thousand dollars a piece for them bitches. I was the first nigga in the city with them motherfuckers. So you need to go on and tell Google, stop lying on me. Shit everywhere, nigga. Ah, shit, pop, shit, fam. Go! Rollo would go on to show off his six luxury cars in a convoy, along with a new caption where he declares himself to be the new Big Meech like it's 2004. A couple of days later, Rollo would go live on Instagram counting $500,000 in a sink. My money, I like my money neat, you know what I'm saying? I like my money, 25,000, you know what I'm saying? That's how I like my money, you know what I'm saying? These, these are number hundreds, this 50,000 hundreds right here. This ain't number hunchos, you know what I'm saying? You did that. Much of it, huh? And soon, he would even abandon the alibi that his piles of cash were from the music game, later showing off a huge bag of cash and telling his followers that the money was made in 20 minutes on the block, as well as showing off the machine gun toting fam goons that protect him. Yeah, bitch. 20 minutes, we made this in 20 minutes, nigga. Big old bag. Ah, shit, pop shit, nigga. Fam goons, shit, nigga. What's going on? Right? A whole lot of ox shit, bro. Fuck you, turn my name. She in the game, back to shit, bro. Yeah. yeah. Then we gonna put some money on you, bitch. A whole lot of, whole, whole lot of, a whole lot of gang shit. Boo gang, boo gang. Ox shit, pop shit. Found goon. Perhaps the pressure was getting to Rollo, because on the 28th of September, Rollo would post on Instagram suggesting that he's stressed, while surrounded by money, of course. The following month, the music video for his track Shy Rakistan with Lil Durk releases, but even with new music dropping, the facade that Rollo was making his money from music rather than the streets was evaporating by the second. And soon, Rollo would be expressing his frustrations towards the cops on social media, being seen in an October the 9th, 2017 social media clip after being pulled over in his Lambo, dissing Atlanta cops to their faces and saying that 
they're so broke they should come and work for him selling dog food. They be at home like, damn, I ain't gonna never make it in life. Like, <laughs> like how you gonna ever make some money out of this? But you agree? I think if you arrest somebody, that shit like murder. You killing somebody? Look at here, old pussy ass, you know? Come here. His bomb man probably make 45 to 48,000 a year. He gotta say yes sir, no sir to him. Shit, he might well come, come work for me. We got the dog food. <laughs> <laughs> now accept the application, officer. We are now accept the application. What we tell them? Our shit, pop shit. Toyo can't stop shit. Clean now in one bit. I cannot hear. Every day of my life, I wake up 10, 20 motherfucking million dollar niggas. So what you wake up to? What you got? 10,000, 20,000 in your account? Even if you say that, that within the five year span, I got it. Look it. Look okay, it. nigga. I hate, I literally hate pussy police. I hate when this look past. Bitch, I know you see that car on my Instagram. Like, you know they're my car. It ain't in your name. Man, I wish you knew how much money I got. I got a whole bunch of goddamn money. <laughs> Never your life will touch no money like that, nigga. You gonna always be a motherfucking nine to five nigga. Broke ass nigga. You gonna be broke for the rest of your life. The day after this unfortunate run-in with the cops, seemingly showing zero self-awareness, Rollo would show off half a million dollars in a trap house, once again taunting the cops, saying 12 can't stop shit. Sam, go! You know what I see, son? You know what I see, son? I haven't seen a million dollars. Damn, look. This half a million dollars, little bitch. Twelve can't stop the shit. Now I got that. Now you did it. You did it. You did it. And on that very same day, Rollo would post an image of himself on a private jet with a huge pile of money. And later a video would surface where Rollo tells the camera that the pilot has told him there are too many pounds of money on the plane and they're all gonna die. I just got word from the pilot that we have too many pounds of money on this plane. <laughs> and it's a strong possibility our ass going down. <laughs> we finna die. Just I'm just thanking God that I did not fly light and I, and I flew goddamn big way. Other than that, our ass was going downtown. I believe I can fly. <laughs> hey, hey, too much money on board this ship. See, I was going to go by boat, but the boat going to go down up under the water. So I said, if I got there on fly, at least I die a fly nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause, cause I wanna put it on the boat who's that I hate water goddamn. So just take me out the long way. At this point, trips on private jets are becoming a common occurrence on Rollo's timeline, no doubt raising a few eyebrows at the local police station. And then, on October the 13th, only a few days after being pulled over in his Lambo, Rollo is back on a private jet, clowning around with his goons on the runway. Hey man! We out here, we loud, we lit, private jet! Just jumped out a little bit! We the around him, motherfucker! Get no service up here. Hello. I can't. I can't call my bitch. I might as well just look out the window and talk to God. We'll get no service up here. Oh shit! I think I got a signal. <laughs> Yo, bitch, they call me. <laughs> During one of these trips, Rollo takes a picture on a plane reading Gucci Mane's biography that would later become one of his most famous album covers. However, unfortunately for Rollo, these private jet trips wouldn't stay private for very long, and the cops would eventually catch wind of his interstate trafficking operation, and moving in to shut down the Fam Goons operation.
On November the 24th, 2017, Rallo dropped his Plugged In With The Cartel mixtape with DJ Cutthroat, a mixtape title which may or may not have been low-key self-snitching, but anyway. It featured a track with a young thug called Red Dot, as well as the track I Made Myself A Boss, which came with a music video where Rallo shows off a whole lot of money on a private jet. Then, on December the 3rd, 2017, Rollo would post one of the biggest piles of cash yet, along with a bold caption where he claims to pay his taxes so that he can post this kind of picture. Oh Rollo, if only it was that easy. On December the 5th, 2017, Rollo would drop one of the biggest songs of his career, a track with Lil Baby called Lil Cali in Pakistan, named after the apartment complex he runs his drug empire out of. This would go on to be one of his most popular songs ever, racking up a whopping 23 million views on YouTube. And the music video featured Rollo and Baby posing next to an another enormous pile of cash. Rollo would be seen on his social media hanging out with Lil Baby's 4PF crew while the shoot was going on, but little did Rollo know that his good times would soon be coming to an end. Of course he would obliviously or recklessly continue posting images on private jets with huge amounts of money, and posing in front of exotic cars with huge loads of money, and on the phone with huge piles of money. But little did Rollo know, however, that during this time he was slipping up on numerous fronts. Because on December the 18th, 2017, Rollo and a group of 10 fam goons boarded a flight from Fulton County Air airport to Sacramento, California. However, what they didn't realise was that the feds had been watching Famerica this whole time, and a subsequent indictment would reveal that surveillance teams made up of the ATF, FBI and Georgia State Patrol would be tracking Rollo and waiting for his jet to return. And then, on December the 22nd, 2017, apparently after returning to Fulton County Airport on a private jet, Rollo's team would be spotted unloading 37 packages from the plane after insisting that the flight crew do not help move them. The cops would then let Rollo and Famerica leave the airport, but soon after, that van containing the 37 packages is stopped by authorities after driving a significant distance in the dark with no lights on. Turns out that van was registered to Rallo's address, and when the cops approached the van, they noted a strong odour of marijuana. Looking inside, they would find 520 pounds of weed worth an alleged million dollars. Rallo himself isn't actually there at this point, but all of his goons are caught in possession of drugs and matching Famerica merch in nearly every bag in the vehicle. Oh, and just for good measure, Rollo's personal ID was also found in a bag next to all of the bags full of weed. The bust in itself is insane, but what's more crazy is what happened next. Because Rollo wasn't in the van that got pulled over, and for the time being, he would get away. But instead of lay low and keep his big mouth shut, just the very next day, Rollo would post an image to Instagram along with a caption saying that he just lost a million dollars in one go, referring directly to the million dollars in weed that the feds had just seized from the fam goons van. I mean, how how dumb can you get, really? This post would of course be seen by the cops, who would later quote it in an indictment as proof that Rollo had been the beneficiary of the $1 million in smuggled kush that had been seized. But to make matters worse, cops also claimed to have found a clip on Rollo's Instagram from the day before the bust showing him getting onto the private jet, surrounded by his Famerica-clad goons, wearing the merch that was found in the bags in the van. With this being a reference to a promo video for his trending freestyle filmed on the plane runway only days before. But clearly not discouraged by the heat of the authorities' attention, Rollo would immediately go back to Atlanta, splashing out on luxury vehicles as gifts for his friends and family. With this followed by another Instagram post where Rollo would brag about owning every house on his street. Rollo would also take to the internet to prove that his $100,000 diamond grill is real diamonds. Pull up on, bird. Hold on. Hey man, yeah. this shit real, nigga. Yeah. We ain't faking on y'all niggas. Guinness Book of World Records, nigga. Pick any diamond in my nigga Rollo mouth, nigga. This shit certified. Cartel yeah. shit. Plugged in with the cartel. You goes from the left side to the right side. However, on December the 30th, 2017, Rollo would post an old picture of himself on a plane with the table full of money again. But this time, something's different. Because this post came with a caption where Rollo says that he's done with all of this flashy stuff and asks, what's next? Perhaps Rollo knew that his days on the streets were numbered, and this post was a last minute attempt to change direction and protect himself from an eventual downfall. Or perhaps he truly had made so much money and brought everything he could possibly want, he was truly looking for a new challenge. Or perhaps he knew that deep down, the jewellery, cars, money and planes were over. Because the unfortunate answer to the question, what's next for Rollo, would end up being, rather predictably, prison.
Despite having already had a taste of police attention, after his million dollar dope seizure, Rallo would spend his final months of freedom flexing his drug money for all to see. On January the 3rd, 2018, he would post to Instagram telling his followers that his mood all 2018 is going to be prayer, grind, and forcing his team to look like money. But 10 days later, Rallo's mood seemed to change, as he would take to social media to call people around him out for begging him for money. Rallo, tired of people begging him for money. Perhaps if he didn't want people begging him for money, he shouldn't keep posting pictures on Instagram flexing millions of dollars. But by God, even with the knowledge that the feds were only a few steps behind him, Rallo would continue all through January posting incriminating pictures to Instagram. Like this January the 20th, 2018 photo of Rallo showing off a suitcase full of cash along with the caption reading, only a stupid man would think he could sell dope forever without going to prison forever. The man that wins the game is the man that runs his money up and run away from that shit. And that's the reason they call me hashtag Mr. Dog Food. I won. Clearly he thought he had gotten away with it and he was just taunting the police at this point. I mean, he's still calling himself Mr. Dog Food for God's sake. And Rollo would continue flexing, posting more and more brazen pictures on private jets with ungodly amounts of money. Here he is in his bathroom with bundles. And then on January the 22nd, he would release a music video for his new track, A Thousand Dollars, where he would appear in that video on a private jet flexing a few thousand thousand dollars. He would then go on tour being seen on Instagram as his tour bus arrived telling fans that he went from a prison bus to a tour bus. Yeah, man, we went from a motherfucking prison bus to a tub bus, nigga. From a cop car to a Lamborghini, nigga. From the big house to a big house, nigga. Hot shit, hot shit, down the streets three. Go get that, fam. Go! Rallo's tour would be to promote his new mixtape, Diary of the Streets 3, releasing on February the 9th, 2018, with the cover up for this project being that picture of Rallo sat with a pile of money whilst reading his mentor Gucci Mane's biography on the jet, an infamous picture taken just before his crew got busted back in December. The album itself would feature collabs from big hitters like Young Thug, YFN Lucci, Key Glock, Lil Baby, Young Dolph, Boosie, Gucci Mane and Future. And for the outro of the album, there was a track called 12 Can't Stop Shit, where Rallo essentially says that he's the new big meech of Atlanta and saying that he made a whopping $20 million from drug dealing. Another reference to the BMF or Black Mafia family drug kingpin Big Meech, who ran the drug game in Atlanta in the early 2000s. Perhaps after releasing more music, Rollo was feeling invincible once again. Because only a week after that project dropped, on February the 16th, 2018, Rollo would post a fresh picture on Instagram standing in front of a fresh yellow Lamborghini, along with a caption suggesting that he had gone back to the same gas station where he had been arrested in this Lamborghini. And then a couple of days later, footage emerges of Rollo picking up his Lamborghini from the police impound lot, where he complains that the cops damaged his car in the process. I'm gonna go ahead and get my motherfucking Lamborghini up. That's the door, nigga. I'm gonna pick up the Lamborghini. They say, Rallo, I'm Rallo. I deserve to have what belongs to me. You know what I did, I told all my shit up, bro. From here, Rollo would continue to associate himself with private jets, on February the 23rd, releasing a video for the song Swear to God, with a whole lot of the video recorded in an aircraft hangar depicting Rollo getting off of private jets. Clearly, the cops would be looking at him closely during this period, as only the following day, on February the 24th, the clip would be posted to his Instagram, which showed the cops searching his tour bus. <laughs> fuck 12, fuck him. And this would be followed by more brazen clips where Rollo shows off a whole bunch of guns on the bus after the raid. Still loaded. Still aren't the dangerous. Ride off with them, bitch. We ride now with the Dracos. Another clip would later be posted to Instagram where Rollo shows himself getting searched by Airport TSA, along with a caption where he says that he is now flagged at every airport. Man, I 
I never been searched so much in my motherfucking whole life of living. Not even in prison. Yeah. Bitch ain't doing no cavity check over here. They still search my bag. Yeah. 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 Fucked up my little book bag. Yeah. Going up in. TSA can't stop shit. 12 can't stop shit. TSA can't stop shit. Can't nobody stop greatness, bitch. And I'm broke from Carol Man County. And a day later, he would post another video to social media showing just how much trouble he was getting in at the airport, along with a spectacular caption that read, Today, I'm going to pay every lawyer I know. I'm checking every person that come around me. I don't want no illegal guns, drugs, or criminal activity near me. I'm telling my accountant to pay taxes on every dollar I made. Every beef I ever got into, y'all won. I don't want no smoke. All my goons got license to carry and secure me. I will be protected and respected forever. The shit they're doing to me is on a whole nother level. Y'all won't big meech me. Fuck all that. Hashtag free Rallo shit. I'ma be here. Dear Federal Brew of Investigation, Homeland Security, Drug Task Force, Gang Task Force, GBI, hashtag Mr. Dog Food is retired. I pray y'all understand that Islam doesn't make me a terrorist. It made me a better man. I'm no treat to the American soil. I love my country, my community. I pay my taxes. And when I say 12 can't stop shit, I mean that with all my heart. Cause no human being can stop God's work. Assalamu alaikum. They weren't on me over here at TSA. Roadblock. Yeah, another roadblock. I'm sure that's a long flight. 9.30 right now. 9.30 right now. Alright, alright. We almost do it. There you go. Perfect, got it. Thank you. They got a roadblock winding. Oh shit. Let's go to Dawes, man. I keep that dog fool out the ride I ain't scared. Yeah. People are just like trying to get the fuck out of here. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the best, man. I need mean, that street. Considering all the problems Rollo was having around this time, you would really think that he would lay low and stop doing things to get under the authority's skin. But let's not forget, Rollo really wanted to be Big Meech and the Black Mafia family. And what he does next is truly crazy. Because Rollo wanted to be Big Meech so bad that he rented the same billboard that BMF took out at the height of their trafficking operations to market the record label that they were using to launder their drug money. With Rollo doing the very same thing, proudly displaying his Diary of the Streets mixtape on the very same billboard for the whole world to see. And he would post a clip of this billboard along with a caption that read, I heard this was the billboard the government got mad at Big Meech about. Guess who the fuck got it now? Right on 285. Hashtag Rallo. Respect the hustle. Respect a man that's out here making a difference and taking care of his community. I brung love and loyalty to the game. It's not another artist in the industry promoting Islam more than me. I put that act shit, pop shit on the map. Thank God. Not Rallo. Now, he knows this is going to make the government mad, and he's doing it anyway. From here, Rallo would continue to post clips complaining about getting searched by TSA at the airport. Why is she walking out? Shondell! I need you. Another day at the motherfucking airport. Harassing me. I feel like I'm a fucking citizen of the country. I don't feel like I was born in America. Okay. Is it a red flag or something over there? I don't know. That I can't answer because I really don't know. She was the nicest person that ever did it. The restaurant treated nigga like drug dealer kingpin. Got yeah, the red dogs over there waiting on me. They waiting on me to come down there. They took me out of the plane. I can't get on the plane. And now, 
I'm off the plane. They kicked me off the plane. They still won't let them people fly. And interestingly, that clip would come along with a caption that was kind of illuminating when it comes to working out how Rallo thinks. With Rallo sarcastically saying, like I'm really flying bricks of dog food through TSA. Whatever y'all looking for, y'all ain't gonna find it because it no longer exists. And after this, on March the 5th, 2018, Rallo does a promotional interview for Vibe magazine, where he appears sat next to an enormous pile of cash, as he does, with the article explaining how Rallo transitioned from a local heroin dealer to a self-made millionaire of the rap game. But elsewhere in the interview, Rallo was also putting on display just how ignorant and reckless he was being with his life at this point, claiming elsewhere to have briefly followed a young thug's advice and move out of the hood, but ultimately saying he didn't even finish his lease in the suburbs before moving back to the bluff to be with his people. Even going as far as to say that he tried to buy back his entire project building, but he didn't want to spend the $2 million that they quoted him for the sale. Rallo was not only recklessly showing off his ill-gotten wealth on social media, but he was also doing detailed interviews on the inner workings of his massive financial empire that he built off the back of slinging dog food. And all while the cops are watching his every move, having just seized a million dollars of drugs from him only three months before. I mean, it's just wild that Rallo would behave this way. And he would go on to do an extensive Vlad TV interview where he would reveal that he owns four houses and 26 apartment units on his block. I own five houses and I own 26 apartment units. Shit, you can call it what you want to call it. We call it Pakistan. <laughs> Rollo would also reveal to Vlad that he thought the cops were going to put him in prison and that the FBI follow him wherever he goes. I said, these motherfuckers better send me to prison for the rest of my life. I gotta leave this shit alone. It wasn't no fucking rap shit. Hell yeah, nah, Vlad. Continue with criminal enterprise and all this shit Big Meech know was about. Like, I was like, hell nah. As soon as you get off the plane, they tell you the FBI just was there. You'd be like, ah, damn, dog. Yet even though he knew the feds were trailing him, Rollo would continue to shoot music videos on a bunch of private planes, with this last one being for his song Dream Last Night, a track that came along with several prophetic lyrics where Rollo says that he's rich off dog food, but he won't get locked up like Big Meech from BMF. Throughout April 2018, Rollo would repeatedly diss the police on social media. On April the 6th, Rollo posts F the police on his Instagram timeline. Then a few days later on April the 8th, Rollo posts a caption on his IG claiming once again to have made $20 million in his 20s. Then on April the 13th, he would post on Instagram with an angry caption telling all policemen to suck each other's thingalings. Then on April the 14th, he would post a bizarre video showing a comedy sketch where a little person fights a little policeman. However strange it was, sadly, that would be one of the last things that Rollo would post on social media personally. Perhaps he should have spent his final days of freedom ducking the police rather than taunting them on Instagram, because the very same day of that post, his whole operation would come crashing down. On April the 14th, 2018, the ATF and FBI received information that Rollo was repeating his trafficking routine, flying by private jet to Sacramento, California, and back in a matter of days, with cops naturally deciding to surveil him. Tracking his cell phone to the infamous Murder Mountain in Humboldt County, the California cannabis growing hotspot made famous by the Netflix documentary of the same name. Clearly, this is where Rollo and his fam goons were sourcing their packages. And when Rollo is leaving Sacramento on the 14th, he's seen on the tarmac with five men and a woman wearing Famerica clothing and loading 17 packages onto the jet, with the wrapping and the size of these packages being suspiciously familiar to the ones that the fam goons were busted with in December 2017. The cops would wait for Rollo's entourage to arrive back in Atlanta on April the 15th, apparently overhearing communications between the plane and the runway requesting that no staff touch packages coming off of the plane. And when that plane does touch down, the cops move in and take eight passengers into custody, with Rollo swinging the jet door shut when he saw the cops and holding himself up in sight. And it turns out apparently the fam goons couldn't even wait to touch down to start smoking, with pilots later reporting that Mary Jane was being smoked mid-flight, and the cops on the runway claimed that they could smell marijuana coming from the plane when it landed. At this point, Rollo refused to comply with the cops' orders, forcing the cops to force entry onto the plane where Rollo was holed up, with the cops even sending in a canine unit to secure Rollo, who surrendered upon being face-to-face -face with an angry police dog. Once inside, the cops would find 17 packages, each containing 25 pounds of ganja, a total of 444 pounds of weed with an estimated street value of $840,000. Now, nine individuals were arrested at the scene and a full indictment was handed down on April the 17th, 2018. The criminal complaint would outline the case against Rollo and it wasn't looking good. The indictment implicated Rollo alongside his co-defendants in the December 22nd, 2017, 
2017 million dollar marijuana drug bust, with the affidavit accusing Rallo of being the leader of Famerica, a criminal street gang, and concluding that Rallo and the Fam goons knowingly participated in a conspiracy to distribute a controlled substance. And then the following day, the news of Rallo's arrest would break in numerous media outlets. And soon after the raid of the private jet on the runway, footage would emerge showing police raiding Rallo's compound known as Pakistan. Tonight, a major raid on a Southwest Atlanta home, and we now know that house belongs to an Atlanta rapper named Rallo. Now, witnesses say the feds had that house surrounded. Now, I do know that Rallo was not here at the time of the raid because he's already in jail. The FBI, Homeland Security, Atlanta police surrounded this brick apartment complex on Lucille Avenue in Southwest Atlanta. Fox 5 has learned the complex belongs to Terrell Davis, also known as Rollo, an Atlanta rapper. Neighbors say several cars were hauled off, including a yellow Lamborghini. Rollo wasn't here at the time of the raid. He's been in the DeKalb County Jail since Sunday, when police arrested him on a criminal conspiracy charge. Wednesday night, DeKalb police told us their narcotics unit says the charges against Rallo are now being handled by the ATF because it's a federal case. Making matters much worse, a gun would then be found in Rallo's home. The news would continue reporting the details that Rallo has been named as the leader of the Famerica gang. An Atlanta rapper accused tonight of leading a gang that was allegedly caught trying to move nearly $2 million worth of pot through Metro Atlanta. And now, criminal complaint alleges the rapper who's called this apartment complex in Atlanta home, a complex just raided yesterday, is the leader of a gang referred to as Famerica, a name Rallo regularly uses to refer to his music team. And at this point, things were not looking good for Rallo and the other fam goons. Yet only the day after this bust, Rallo would release the recklessly titled compilation album, 12 Can't Stop Shit. The project came with a cover art featuring Rallo quite literally giving the middle finger to the cop and the project itself had a selection of some of Rollo's biggest songs and features of his career. Clearly, while Rollo was in jail, his team were on the outside getting busy and trying to keep things moving. Following the raid on Pakistan, Rollo's manager Queen would come out to suggest that she believed Rollo was being targeted simply due to his lyrics and that he plans to plead not guilty. Rollo's manager Queen is brought to tears. She says sometime next week, 23-year-old Rollo will plead not guilty to the charges brought against him. He's facing several allegations and was arrested last weekend at PDK after police found marijuana in the cargo area. The criminal complaint says he's the leader of a gang called Famerica. His manager wants to clear that up. And what is Famerica? Famerica is the record label that Rollo started. Um, he started that so that he'll be able to sign artists. He signed himself. The sad part is that I don't understand why when black people come together, it can be considered a game. Just because I love my brother and I want to be around my brother, why is that a game? He has been targeted because of his song, because of his lyrics, because of his faith. His Instagram is also mentioned in the complaint documents. Mm -hmm. um, what was your reaction when you saw that they actually quoted an Instagram caption? I mean, everybody knows that Instagram is for entertainment. I mean, how many people that you know put on a show for Instagram? Everyone. Rollo would initially attempt to get bailed, but he would be denied when the cops accused him of continuing to run his drug empire from behind bars. It's a real life crime drama. Famous Atlanta rapper Rollo is just minutes from being released on bail when shocking new evidence keeps him behind bars. Evidence that prosecutors say shows the rapper is still running a drug empire from behind bars. Prosecutors read a series of cryptic handwritten notes that they say they found in a purse that belonged to Rollo's girlfriend. In those notes, prosecutors say were instructions from the rapper Rollo telling others how to run his business while he's locked up. So Rollo would remain stuck in jail, but at least he would continue to release music and videos from inside. For example, on June the 7th, 2018, Rollo would drop a music video for his cop-hating anthem, 12 Can't Stop Shit. And this would come along with an intro featuring earlier footage of Rollo abusing Atlanta of cops for not having as much money as him after he was pulled over in his Lambo that time. It also featured lots of B-roll of him performing in an aircraft hangar surrounded by private planes, you know, the things he uses to smuggle packs. And the music video also featured an outro where Rollo is taken away in a cop car, you know, that thing that happened as a result of his crimes. He <laughs> like on May the 9th, 2018, Rollo would appear in a phone-in interview with 11 Alive News, where he explains he believes he was wrongfully targeted. A chance to share his side of the story. I feel like they kind of wrongfully targeted me. They let me know that social media is probably one of the strongest things in our lives right now. 
Prosecutors are using his social media posts and captions against him, something his attorneys argue is just for entertainment. And I realized how big I was and how powerful I was. And like, I had to know whatever I say, they're gonna follow me and people gonna take it in very hard. So we gotta be careful what we say. Cause people gonna follow whatever we say. And if we say something wrong, then we'll lead people in the wrong direction. I mean, I'm very appreciative for everything that everybody done for me. Like, no drugs was ever sold at my apartment complex. Like, all the cars and stuff that I bought, like, none of them was for me. That was for my family. I save all my money. I put my money into my property. I put my money into my people. But wrongfully accused or not, Rallo would be stuck in jail for quite some time, spending several years inside, awaiting developments in his case, with the outcome in the end ultimately being a significant L for Rallo. Despite being locked up on serious charges, Rollo's name was still ringing in the streets. He dropped a music video for his new big collab with NBA Youngboy, Rainstorm, whilst behind bars. And in his absence, other big figures in the rap game were paying homage, like Gilly the Kid, who would compare Rollo to BMS Big Meech, something that you know he would have loved. Let's keep it real, Big Meech is a, is a, is a, is a real nigga. He was doing the same shit. You, you got billboards in Atlanta, you niggas ain't sold no records yet. If Rallo and Meech and, and niggas like that could do that shit over, they would. But niggas be doing shit for the gram. You can't be doing shit for the gram when you really moving grams. On October the 12th, 2018, despite the ongoing legal struggles, Rallo releases more music, dropping his conspiracy project along with a front cover art referencing his legal case. And of course, with a large photo of him holding a big old bale of cash. And whoever's in control of Rallo's social media definitely has a good sense of humour because on November the 2nd, 2018, they would continue posting pictures of Rallo with suitcases full of cash. In February 2019, rumours would begin to circulate that Rallo had been offered a five-year sentence as part of a plea deal. However, Rallo would reportedly reject this saying he doesn't fold and apparently as soon as he turned the deal down he would go back to his cell and feed his old dorm snacks. Two months later in April 2019 a petition for Joe Biden to pardon Rollo picks up steam and 50,000 signatures. This was naturally unsuccessful. On June the 29th 2019 Rollo would drop his new project Free Rollo. That was also not successful in securing Rollo's release as month after month would go by and he would continue to rot in prison. Seemingly forgotten by feds and fans alike with no sign of a trial or resolution in sight. In October 2019, Rollo would appear on Instagram Live from prison, with him apparently claiming control of the prison along with his fam goons. Yeah, bitch, I walk through the jail like I want to now, nigga. I run this shit, I rented it, it's mine, bitch. Free my motherfucking bro, nigga. Fam, cool. Rent the jail, rent the whole jail. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted to know. We always figured it'd be a way yeah. out of that motherfucking control. Daddy, you know what? We control the motherfucking yeah, control. We control, control, we control the streets, the control booth, all, right. right. all, all that right. shit, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Fam, go! Then in February 2020, Rollo checks in from behind bars with DJ Scream appearing to be in good spirits. Rollo, what's up, bro? Talk to us. <laughs> well, you know what's up? Hot shit, pot shit. You know what's happening? So I can't stop motherfucking thing. Rollo would complain, saying if it wasn't for people ratting, he would be a free man right now. So we're here for the facts, man. When you coming home, man, the streets miss you. The facts is, um, the facts is, if I don't want to right at niggas, I could have been out. Rollo would also explain that he was debating whether or not to take a plea deal, suggesting that having already been in jail for 22 months means he's already served a significant amount of time regardless of what his eventual sentence ends up being. Mm -hmm. I've been locked up 22 months. So you add the 22 with the 15 months I'll be out and 15 months if push come to show. But you said worst come to worst. If worst come to worst, you got 15 months. If worst come to worst, I'm going to take the plea. But right now, it's fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Rallo's time being interviewed would be cut short, unfortunately, as other inmates behind him would continually fight over who gets to use the phone line. My what? I don't know why the hell you gonna make me do that? Man, get them niggas locked down. I mean, I was in the midst of something. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is crazy. No, man, no. Nah. He be hanging up. He be rolling. 
On January the 6th, 2020, news would break that Rallo would be getting a quarter of a million dollar bond, and he would be subject to strict conditions, including 24 hour a day lockdown at a designated property, an ankle monitor, and no outside communication by phone, email, or social media. However, Rallo's hopes of getting out would soon be dashed when reports surfaced of him still selling drugs from inside the jail, with news coming out in December suggesting that Rallo had used an Apple Watch to slang dope from his cell, with the feds reportedly seizing a million dollars worth of jewelry from him amid these back and forths. Then in March 2021, Rallo would make yet another attempt to get out of jail, with another petition calling for Rallo's freedom coming from an organization called Mission Green being sent to President Biden. This petition received supporting signatures from many rap heavy hitters like Drake, Lil Baby, and T.I., and of course this naturally went nowhere. As time went on, Rallo or his team would post written statements to his Instagram, like this one where Rallo complains about fighting an inner battle after one of his friends turned on him, saying he just wants to put all of this behind him and move on in life. He would speak out from jail again in a September the 9th, 2021 Off The Porch interview, where he thanked his homies in Pakistan for holding it down for him whilst he's in jail. You know, my niggas in Pakistan, that have been holding down apartments since I've been incarcerated. While still in jail on September the 10th, 2021, Rollo would drop his latest project, Political Prisoner. And then the following month, Rollo would make a post on IG suggesting that his case would soon be coming to a close, followed by another of him praying and saying the moment he got the call that the feds were on the runway, he knew that it was all over, eventually announcing in January 2022 that he would finally be seeing his court case in March. And in the end, Rollo would be sentenced to eight years in federal prison. Reacting to the news in a statement on Instagram, which read, the judge sentenced Rallo to eight years in federal prison. He was given over four years credit for time served, and they also credited him with one and a half years for good time. He was recommended one year ankle monitor after the halfway house prove his home address, which will bring him home to us late next year. But our goal is for him to complete his GED or RDAP drug program so we can get another year off his sentence. That will bring him home to us in less than a year. We need prayer hands. Hashtag free Rallo. So for being caught smuggling close to $2 million of dope into Atlanta, Mr. Dog Food would wind up getting eight years in jail, with rewards for time served and good behavior, ultimately meaning that Rallo has an expected release date of 2023. Basically, five years in jail from the date that he was caught on the runway with all of those packs. And I really wish I could say that Rallo learned his lesson, but realistically, it's hard to believe that he's going to come out of this situation a changed man. Making millions of legitimate dollars in the music industry wasn't enough to keep him out of the bluff. So I'm kind of not convinced that five years behind bars, still slinging dope off the Apple Watch, is going to make him change his ways. Rallo's story is really the dope dealer speed run. He became the new big meech of Atlanta in breakneck speed, using that money to buy his way to the top of the rap game and legitimize at least some of his income. But it's really a tragedy that he still felt the need after all of this to return to his community and continue poisoning it with loads of drugs. Flying weed in from Cali is one thing, but if Mr. Dog Food really sold as much heroin to his community as he says, that's really nothing to be proud of. Rallo's Instagram was a shrine to the flashy lifestyle that comes with being a big time drug dealer. But the aspect that you didn't see on Instagram was the destruction that Rallo was bringing to his community. He did so many interviews on how horrendous his life was growing up in the drug infested alleys of the bluff. But the one thing he never seems to acknowledge is how he grew up to become the very person poisoning his own community. Because every dollar he stuffed onto his private jet, flexing at any opportunity, is the story of a junkie that probably did terrible things to get that money. Junkies that are probably spending their last dollar on dope that is only going to give them a fast pass to the grave. So Rallo's story is an insane rise and fall like no other, but at the end of the day he's not someone to look up to. If you're looking for a rags to riches story about somebody who rapped about drugs to get out of their difficult situation and make something of themselves, then you should look up to Future. Because Rallo on the other hand is really just an example of somebody who did bad things in their life to make their situation better, but was ultimately brought down by greed, which made him squander the once in a lifetime opportunity that millions of people struggling in Atlanta all the world over would have died to have. I hope you found that story interesting. I hope you found something to learn from the situation that Rollo went through. And I appreciate you rocking with me and the channel. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. Shout out my new researcher, Sam, who helped me make this video very quickly. We didn't have a whole lot of time to put this together, but we rose to the occasion. And I got a lot more content coming for you very soon. We're growing the team. We're out here. I got a lot more docs, a lot more second channel, first channel, third channel, all this good stuff. It's coming. So I appreciate Appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. And until next time, peace out. And also shout out to Vance Global for sponsoring, for sponsoring the ting. Go check them out. Go get some of the Vance gummies. They're fire. Peace.